Taken at face value, it's understandable that the way Red Bull handled its driver's race strategies in the Dutch Grand Prix might have upset some people. But Sergio Perez has the power to prevent things like this happening. At Zandvoort, Perez made the right call at the start of the race to pit for intermediate tyres as soon as the rain hit and his reward was the race lead once everybody else had come in. Suddenly, another poor qualifying on Saturday was a distant memory. But then, when it was time to switch back to slicks a few laps later, Red Bull decided to pit Max Verstappen first when he was running second to Perez. Perez then came in a lap later and sounded surprised to see that his teammate had got ahead of him by pitting earlier, known in F1 as an undercut. Inevitably, this sparked some conspiracy theories about how Red Bull had shafted Perez to get Verstappen back ahead at his home Grand Prix, which he went on to win for the third year in a row. Most of the time, F1 teams give strategic priority to the lead car, it's effectively a reward for being ahead, and because pitting first in F1 is almost always a way to gain time, it's considered the right thing to do to protect the driver who's ahead. So why didn't Red Bull follow that convention? T-Boss Christian Horner explained the thinking from the pit wall. He said Red Bull felt Verstappen was vulnerable to cars behind that had already pitted. So if Perez pitted first and Verstappen was left out for another lap, the expectation was that Max would end up dropping from second to fourth, losing out to Fernando Alonso and Pierre Gasly. So the team took the decision to bring Verstappen in first. This would protect him against Alonso and Gasly, with Horner admitting that the decision carried the risk of Verstappen jumping ahead of Perez. But Red Bull felt it was better to keep its cars in first and second, regardless of the order, than to protect Perez's lead at all costs and end up running first and fourth after the stops for slicks. That decision was met with scepticism from those who believe Red Bull favours Verstappen over Perez, but in Horner's words, it was a no-brainer. Perez didn't seem particularly worked up about that call post-race. He accepted that the team has more information than the drivers in those tricky situations, although he added it would be reviewed in the post-race debrief, which can sometimes be a driver's way of deflecting from any disappointment in public. And it has been Red Bull's preferred way of handling any tension between its drivers, particularly after the controversy that exploded at the end of last season's Brazilian Grand Prix. There will always be that nagging doubt of if Red Bull would have prioritised protecting its second car if they'd been running the other way around, with Verstappen leading and Perez behind. But ultimately, there is a way for Perez to avoid these things happening. It was telling that Horner pointed to Verstappen taking seven seconds out of Perez in three laps after they'd switched to intermediates. Perez enjoyed a lead of over 13 seconds when Verstappen rejoined behind him, yet by the time Verstappen was called in first next time around at the end of lap 11, the gap had come down to four seconds. Perez claimed his lack of pace relative to Verstappen, who was also coming through traffic, was because he'd been told there could be more rain coming, so he didn't want to burn up his tyres to the point that they weren't of any use if he needed to stay out. That seems slightly odd given every other team seemed to be telling their drivers that it would be a short shower, to the point that some even tried to hang it out on slicks without having to pit. Some teams were expecting some more light rain to come, and it did briefly a few laps later than expected, but Perez's side of the Red Bull garage must have overcompensated for that possibility. From laps 5 to 10 on intermediates, Verstappen's slowest lap was quicker than Perez's fastest. That didn't paint a convincing picture for the team that if Verstappen got stuck in traffic, Perez would be able to comfortably deliver the victory instead. But this isn't just about a few laps in the wet at Zandvoort. During their time together as teammates, but especially this year, Perez has struggled to consistently get near Verstappen. After a strong start to this season, taking well-executed wins in Jeddah and Baku that were assisted by problems for Verstappen, Perez has been destroyed for most of the season, something Mercedes boss Toto Wolff says he can't comprehend, given Perez is a proven Grand Prix winner and in Toto's words, not an idiot. Ultimately, if Red Bull felt totally confident its second driver could deliver a faultless drive to bring home a victory once in the lead at Zandvoort, perhaps it wouldn't have been so keen to protect Verstappen's track position. So it's not a case of not wanting the second car to win. But Perez's flaky record this year meant that dropping Verstappen behind other cars, which could delay him or even worse if something went really wrong in battle, wasn't worth the risk. Ultimately, Perez hasn't shown enough this year to give Red Bull faith that he would get the job done if given the favourable strategy. That's not favouritism towards Verstappen, it's favouring Red Bull's best chance of continuing its unbeaten streak in 2023 as it bids to become the first team to win every single race in an F1 season. 
and the rest of Perez's race supported Red Bull's logic. Okay, he couldn't be blamed for the fumbled pit stop later on when the rain came back, but beyond that, he was the one who slid off the road when conditions became atrocious and he picked up a pit lane speeding penalty that dropped him to fourth in the final result. Verstappen didn't make those errors, and if his race had been compromised and Red Bull had been relying on Perez to keep the winning streak alive, then there's every chance we'd now be hailing Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin taking their first victory together. It's understandable that any Red Bull decisions that appear to go against Perez lead to questions being asked about the team's priorities, and we've seen in the past that the closer Perez gets to Verstappen, the easier it is for tensions to boil over inside Red Bull. As we saw after the Monaco and Brazilian Grand Prix last year, the Verstappen camp isn't shy about throwing its weight around if it feels Max isn't getting the backing he needs or deserves. But right now, Perez isn't performing at a high enough level to create any tension behind the scenes. Michael Schumacher used to say that if someone else wanted to get his number one treatment at Ferrari, all they had to do was show they were quicker than him. For Perez to get what might be perceived as better treatment from Red Bull, he doesn't even need to go that far against Verstappen. He just needs to be a lot closer than he's managed for most of this year and to prove to Red Bull that he's reliable and can be trusted to perform consistently at the level the team needs from him. So, the plan is for Perez to just do better and make himself a priority, but there's an obvious problem with that. Even if we're asking Perez to get closer to Verstappen more consistently, not even match him, that's a lot easier said than done. Verstappen's upped his game this season, particularly since something clicked with this car during the Baku weekend, where Perez claimed his most recent win. Now, Max is an almost impossible benchmark, and don't take our word for it, Fernando Alonso agrees. Alonso reckons that Verstappen's doing a better job than anyone on the grid, including himself. That's bad news for Perez because with all due respect, if Alonso or Lewis Hamilton, who Alonso also name-checked, can't be on Verstappen's level more often, then it's extremely unlikely that Perez can. It takes a lot to get Alonso to even come close to admitting someone else is being better than him. That should tell you everything about Verstappen in 2023. Obviously, his dominance doesn't reflect well on Perez. The difference between what they are doing with the same car, and it is the same car despite what some angry corners of the internet may want to believe, is pretty staggering. On the one hand, it's on Perez to change that as we keep saying. He can be second best to Verstappen without being this emphatically second best. But we should take on board more of what Alonso has said about Verstappen too. It actually came from our very own Scott Mitchell Malm asking Verstappen in the post-race press conference how people can underestimate how hard it is to win so consistently even with the fastest car and whether this race with two downpours, an imperfect strategy and a late red flag was the ultimate example of just how difficult it can be. Unsurprisingly, Verstappen was on board with Scott's assessment, but Alonso was as well. He was clearly paying attention to Scott's question to Verstappen because when Alonso was asked about Max by another journalist a few minutes later, he referenced what Scott had said to Max and said he agreed that Verstappen's being underestimated. And don't worry Scott, eventually Fernando will learn your name. Alonso's point is that every driver needs to get in their car and feel so connected that they can finish a weekend feeling like they got 100% out of it as often as possible. Nobody does that all the time, but Alonso reckons Verstappen's doing it more than anybody else, and he said that's why Max is dominating. Alonso's not saying Verstappen's better than him, he's just admitting he's doing the best job right now, a sentiment he has expressed before, for example about Robert Kubica in 2008. Alonso's point, which we agree with, is that sure, the formidable Red Bull RB19 makes this possible, but Verstappen makes it a reality. It should be something Perez can theoretically do as well, but it's a really, really high bar to try to reach on any given weekend, let alone race after race.